So that's the thing that is, uh, that is ongoing. Now I want to start a new series which I've been thinking for a long time already, but kind of put, putting off because every time I see the calendar, I'm like, oh, uh, first fruit is coming. Oh, Pentecost is coming. But I really felt like we need to, to get into this because we are really on the verge of, of a very, very interesting house. Of course, we talk about the, the traditional gathering and even apostolic provided gathering. But then a lot of us are going into marketplace, right? All of us are marketplace. Nobody here is really full-time. But then when we go into there, you start to see there are certain tension, there are certain unknown. So uh, I want to begin this uh, multi-part uh, series. I don't know how it will go because the, the last couple of years, the Lord has been causing me to do series. And series is just... You, you have to be a bit disciplined once the Lord gives you a framework. And it's like, okay, I want you to do five points. And I, I guess that's with life, right? When God kind of set you into a path, I want you to go into business. I want you to go into media. I want you to go into whatever. And then you have to commit to the plan, right? And, and whether it's social media, whether it's whatever, you have to commit to the plan. So that's one of the things that the discipline God is going to cause many of us to go through. And it will reap fruits. But before we look into that, let's just talk about some of the prophetic picture, some of the, you know, we always need a, a big picture kind of thing. And what kind of caused me to want to do this series is that the past few months, few years, we've been doing certain kind of teaching. Uh, FOT last year, of course, we did hybrid anointing. Remember hybrid anointing? We talked about Nehemiah. And just so interesting that a business person was called to sort out the high priest, the temple. Then we talk about manifesting new identities is, you know, before Passover, crossing over, and, and all of a sudden we are like almost Pentecost already. Of course, activation or redemptive prophecy, I first saw this theme, Glory of Zion uh, newsletter, and it's really such an appropriate thing for us. Many of us are being activated. Look at your neighbor and say, you are being activated. So I'm glad, you know, we did uh, hearing the voice of God again. I, I know some of you have done 10 times already, but it is different. Every time is different. The truth is the same. And I, I began to see that, look, there is portion. Every time we talk about portion, you know, don't think like old thinking, like, oh, you have an assignment, you're in a committee, you have been commissioned. But you know, the reality of portion is like this. If God calls you to a place and you don't do it, someone else can replace you. It's just like that. And that's why you look, even just look at our house. You know, we can have, yeah, this person is responsible, but if this person doesn't do it, someone else will just come in. That person doesn't need title. That, doesn't, that person doesn't need commissioning. But through relationship, that person will gain the sphere. And that's one of the things that I really believe is happening in the Apostolic Center. It is a very, very organic, but true relationship, anointing and fruits. Authority will be established. So we're not looking at traditional positioning and, and people will be like, oh, you know, am I in this WhatsApp group? Am I in this newsletter? No, it has nothing to do with that. What you can do, and you see the parable of talent, right? When the talent is not being uh, multiplied, God, take it away. And then He gave it to someone else. So that's why we're coming to a season of separation. And it's coming to what we call zenith. You know, zenith is peak. And... It will come into peak because we should be manifesting our true identity. When that comes out, you will be in the right place. Season or no one, we've been saying that for a long time because when you look at Genesis 6 5, God is saying that the people are thinking and doing evil continually. So every day you read the news, you watch television, you know, right? The evil is not going to stop. Don't, don't, you know, don't have this kind of separatist mindset, you know, that God is going to take it away. No, it's not going to happen because this is the warfare of this season. And of course, you have been hearing prophetic words. Apostle Charter said, I encourage you to, I, I, think, I think Joyce put it in the Bible study group. But it's worth watching the whole thing because it's very, very interesting. And I was just talking to Lan Shi, I said, wow, this is a very serious word. But at the same time, I felt it's a good word. It's an encouraging word because I'm dividing to send out. The process of dividing has been happening for 500 years. You know that. With church history, every time a new truth comes, there is dividing, but we're coming into an even greater season of dividing. What are we really dividing? And I was just asking the Lord, and it's very simple. He said, it is a choice to either be a Saul or David. When you think about King Saul, right, on the surface, he doesn't look so bad. He's just like, you see, it's like he wanted God, but not so much. 
That's the problem. And, and that's the thing. That's, you know, to God, that's worse than if you say, I hate you. It's like you pretend to want to be me, but you don't want to go all the way out. That's lukewarm. So it's either so or to be a David. David, go all, all the way out. He was not perfect, but he did it anyway. Then, of course, a white door for effective service has opened. Remember this in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Apostle Paul was just telling them, look, I'm going to Macedonia. Remember the, the thing, he, he started to have dream about the Macedonian calling him. So some of you, you're going to have dreams. Some of you are going to have opportunity. And it's going to be this kind of thing. And white door has opened for me. Are you going to take it or not? So these are the things that is going to impact us in our decision making. So just on the testimony, exactly is that there are so many doors open, right? And finally, you have to make a choice. So, so that, that is what Eunice needed. She needed that kind of processing to reach the final destination. For some people, it's just, I mean, I just think about my, my own uni life. I, I'm a very simple person, okay? And, and you know, I, I, almost, I almost always take my first offer. I almost always. I, I mean, that's the way I process, but we are all different. Thank God for that, okay? All right, so let's talk about this. Um, you, you know, I, I kind of outlined six, seven, eight parts. I don't know. It may increase, it may decrease. So today we want to start off, we talk about the body because we have to understand that we are a body and we all have different portion to play. Nobody can be a superhero and say, I'm the entire body, right? So we're going to do introduction, talk a little bit about the understanding of body. Then of course, we want to talk about the house. We want to talk, talk about the marketplace. And this is really, um, you know, we, a lot of us are in both. But I really feel in days to come, God is going to give us a focus. God is going to say uh, more in the house or more marketplace. And when I talk about that, I'm, I'm talking about your, your greatest gift. Because you can be a marketplace person, yet your greatest gift might be in the house and vice versa. So this is something to, to bear in mind. Then of course, we start to talk about hybrid equipping. Can equipping really happen in marketplace? This is very challenging. Later, I'll show you a, a verse that sums out the entire house. Can you transplant that into the marketplace? Something to think about. Then, of course, we want to talk about sphere. Every time, oh, every time we talk about problems in the house, it's always sphere. It's always people cannot understand what they're supposed to do. And when they are supposed to do certain things, the, the emotion, they are, they, are not, they are not happy about it. And, and just now, we even, uh, you know, Actually, one of, the, one of the most dangerous emotions, you know, is what? It's the emotion, this is not fair. This is one of the worst emotions. By the way, do you know that that was the original unhappiness? Cain, right? Cain came out and said, this is not fair. What is not fair? God said, I expected everyone to give your best. I don't care where you come from. I expect you to give the best. And that's where he felt. So this is one of the things. Now, by the way, do you know that the entire woke ideology is based on, I'm not fair? God is not fair. By the way, do you know God is not fair? Yes. Okay, we'll talk about that a bit later, okay? Then, of course, because of that, there will be tension. Everyone say tension. tension. And we are already at the forefront of the whole thing. You know, we, we are almost like nobody is full-time minister and things like that, but there will come tension. But do you know there is advantage in tension? When you have tension, you create the energy for people to go to the right place and, and do the right thing. So tension is not a bad thing, okay? And, and finally, at the end of the day, the sum, everything come together. Everything come to, to fulfill the purposes of God on earth. That, that's the ultimate understanding. Of course, in between, you know, usually this kind of series in between, we add, add, we add, I hope it doesn't become a 10 or 12 or 15 part series, okay? It's going to be never ending. Okay, just quickly, why this teaching? Okay, the first thing, of course, is really, we are in a season. There is a manifestation of kingdom through marketplace. And now, of course, we have a separate uh, one whole chapter of Marketplace. But when it comes to Marketplace, I just want us to quickly think about two concepts. And you have heard this before. One is culture, modus, and the other is what we call gate of influence. They're very similar, but not quite the same. Culture, modus, and this is really coming from Seven Mountain Teaching. If you read the book, Change Agents, you know, us humans actually spend quite a bit of time explaining this. But it's really at the end of the day, what is culture modus? It is a power base. That means it, it, it's a collective. It could be people, it could be organization, but they have the power. Everyone say power. power. What kind of power? They, they can cultivate trends. 
And, and that's why today, if you are into in social media, the, the, the keyword is trending, right? But even then, it keeps changing, right? People, you, you can see the frequency is changing. You can see that people kind of lose interest a bit. So, so it's like thinking, what is the next big thing? What is the next trend? You know, it's like people are saying that, look, the, the social media as it is, is reaching its peak. So, you, you know, once you reach peak, there's only one way that one way is down. So they will think of new trends. They will think of new values. And what we're seeing is a global power. And, and that's one of the reasons why you can see authority around the world, they are becoming so blatant. They, they, they kind of do bad things right in front of your face because they control the media. They control the technology. They think there is no way for you to fight back. And this is really what we saw, for example, at the Tower of Babel. They were so blatant. They thought nobody could stop them. They thought even God could not stop them. But God did, right? With the confusion of the language. Gate of influence. Now, it's very interesting that if you are intercessors, prophets, you know, you, you have the understanding of gatekeeper. They always say, look, the, the church is a gatekeeper. The apostles, prophets, teachers, etc. are the gatekeepers. But that's not quite correct because... You are only gatekeeper if you are able to change the gate of influence. So if you say, oh, we do a lot of warfare and things like that, it's, are things changing? If, not, change, if they're not changed, maybe something is wrong with the approach, right? So gate of influence, whether it's wealth, knowledge, power, these are the big three, right? At the end of the day, these are the people that control the minds and hearts. And then they influence and they persuade. That's why you know you can influence the minds, hearts of people for the better or for the worse. That's why you are seeing that people are saying, oh, this is good. I just saw the other day, you know, they, they, were, they were just comparing, right, all the Hollywood stars, right, 2024 versus 2010. You look at oh, so many of the female actresses, they look terrible. They look like monsters, seriously. And it's like, that, that's their, that's their uh, standard of beauty. It's like, if there's a standard, I, I really don't want to watch. You know what I'm talking about now. It is really like, yeah, uh, you know, we all have our choices and things like that. But that's why when you are the gate of influence, you can decide things becoming better or things becoming worse. So anyway, we go back to the original mandate God gave to Adam and Eve, right? Genesis 1.28. And then Jesus, when he ascended, Acts 1.8, he said what? You are to do all these things to cover the entire world, right? H have dominion over everything. Acts 1.8 to the ends of the world. So we know the scope is huge. Then the second thing is really, you know, we talk about uh, restoration of truth. Many of you have just attended uh, hearing the voice of God, right? And of course, there's always church history. And I know you know church history already, but it is, I think it is really worth it to know church history well. Yeah. And some of you, it's like, actually very, very interesting. I, I, know some, I know a person who have gone through MSG at least 15 times, okay? And then one, one day we just say, okay, can you do church history? And then suddenly that person becomes very kalangkabu. Don't know what to do, don't know what to do. And, and they get at the side, say, oh, how to do this, how to do that? And it's because you have listened to it, but you do not have ownership over the teaching. So that's why I say, if you have ownership, you will, it will really become part of you. And you will understand that when, when the Spirit of God comes and gives us new things, it is for us to advance. So anyway, 500 years, many, many restoration, right? Now we have come to the age of saints, right? How many, I don't know how many of you are from Catholic background, right? You know, they have the canonized saint. I'm not, not talking about those saints, okay? Who are the saints? Are, are you a saint? Yes. It's like, okay, it's a very old and quaint word, right? But anyway, saints movement, of course, a, a coin term by Bishop Bill Hammond. It is considered a restorative move. Now, what is so special about this is that majority of ministry and service will be predominantly carried out by ordinary people. We are ordinary, we are nothing special, right? But God gives us that kind of special favour. See, the thing about saints movement and, and one of the things why a lot of, a, a lot of uh, religious institutions find it very hard to embrace because it is shaking up. Imagine people can do all the things that denomination have been doing. They can do conferences, they can do mission work, they can do welfare work, they can do transformation, they can do reformation, they can teach, they can teach theology. It's very threatening to them, right? That's why the status quo is being shaken and denomination is lo losing the grip on them. See, here's the thing about the religious institution. I call them the demon of religion. 
what it tries to do to bind God's people, not just not not unbeliever, God's people into a set pattern. And we all have friends like this, right? Every time you, you talk a little bit, and, and you can see they become very, very defensive, right? You just share a little bit, they're like, oh no, la, we also do the same and things like that, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but it's okay, I'm not asking you to go and challenge everyone. I'm just saying that there will come a time where God may give you the opportunity to smash the demon of religion. Amen. 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 2 and 5. In the last days, difficult times will come. Are we in the last days? For what, what, what kind of difficulty? For men will be lovers of self. Wow, this is really... Uh, I mean, Apostle Paul kind of saw it more than 2,000 years ago. I mean, the, the narcissist behaviour is incomparable. Incomparable. And here's the thing. Why are they like that? Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. They want a form. They want religion. And this is really the demon of religion. So that's why God moves in into the saints' movement so that we can smash the religious institution. Now, remember when we did a future war, the church, that's what Apostle Chuck saw, right, so many years ago, 40 years ago, that he is moving people from one wineskin to another wineskin. So, so when we talk about within us, the, the greatest danger is really the religious crowd. They don't want to move with the Holy Spirit. They cannot accept the ways of the Spirit. So don't be surprised when you saw them slandering you, attacking you, or go against the very kingdom of God. I mean, just don't be surprised, okay? So, so one of the things, of course, recently we have been doing, uh, we haven't been doing a, a lot of strategic uh, prayer assignment, but we want to do it again. And, and that's one of the things that, talking about the house and marketplace, as we go more and more into marketplace, as we do more and more spiritual warfare, there will be less and less opportunity for training. That's why I, I want to say this, that every opportunity you have, you really want to take advantage. You, we, you will not always have this kind of privilege of having so many training. Yes. There will come a time, that, no training, you just have to do it. All your training is on the job, on the job. So, so that's why we still have a bit of time. Make full use of whatever that is being offered. Eventually, you will find that it's very, very limiting already. And, and that's just the nature. It's like when a company wants to expand, right? You don't have so much time for training and things like that. You just have to go out and do the thing. And we are in a season of expansion very, very soon. So that's why the saints movement will cause a new breed. Everyone say new breed. New breed. So new breed, we are talking about marketplace. Not just ministers, but equippers. How do we equip people in marketplace? This is the, the transition that we are making. Because in the past, we always say, look, equipping come to our event. We are still under the roof of the church. But can we bring it to the marketplace? That, that's the, the thing that we have to begin to think about it. And of course, I already mentioned it. There will be some tension. If not already happening, it's okay. Tension gives us an opportunity. But that's why the whole purpose of this series is for, for us to lay out, discuss all the issues, all the potential issues. But then at the end of the day, the exhortation is this. We have to come together. Marketplace or house, doesn't matter. Nobody is more superior or inferior, okay? So that's really the reason for this teaching. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the saying so but just very little because in the marketplace chapter, we'll, we'll deal on that. And then I want to talk about the body, okay? So I already mentioned Bishop Bill Hammond, he co-wrote The Coming of the Saints. So there's a book actually, a very thick book, The Saying So very interesting uh, because that book actually more, is more of an outline of how it happened. Why God wants the saints movement. Now, by the way, the saints have always existed, right? I mean, you have the bishop, you have the archbishop, you know, in medieval time, then you have the pastor, you have the teacher, but saints have always existed, right? But they are often marginalized. That means they are put at the side. You are just a decoration. You are just someone who comes here and gives some offering, donation, tie, or whatever. See, the institution of religion, here we come the word again, religion. At the end of the day, and I know some people are not very happy with this kind of description, but it is the truth. It is basically an anti-Christ spirit. If you learn church history, remember Constantine? He, he was the one that kind of instituted this anti-Christ. Because the anti-Christ spirit will try to destroy the foundation of the church. So what is the foundation? Of course, it's Ephesians 2.20, the Apostle Prophet, but the foundation basically is the entire 5-4, right? So right from the get-go, the 5-4 ministers now, a more accurate word is actually ascension gift, right? 
Ephesians 4, right? When he ascended on high, he gave you gifts. But of course, every time, I, I kind of don't use ascension gift also because every time you say it, people are like, huh? Huh? So, so fivefold, easier lah. So 300 plus AD, remember, it was removed in favor of single priest model. What, what, are you familiar with single priest model? It's basically the pagan model, right? We have one person coming out, do all the ritual, and then whatever they say you do, stand out, sit down, stand out, sit down, kneel down, take communion, go home. It, it's like you are just a robot like that, right? So, so this kind of thing kind of take away personal responsibility. That's why after 2,000 years, you realize that it is so difficult to get people to be responsible for their personal spiritual growth. This is one of the hardest things. You see, here, here's the thing I want to say, especially those of you with strong pastoral gift. Pastoral gift is not to maintain people. Because a lot of time you come here, oh, these people have problems, these people have problems, these people have problems. Okay, let, let's all send to the pastor for them to make. No! The, 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 the pastoral gift is cause people to be a self-starter. It is cause people to be like, take personal responsibility. This is one of the things I find the hardest in the whole body of Christ because people don't want to be responsible. Later we'll look at how to become, how, how to take, how to be accountable to your own gifting. Then of course, we have the pagan celebration introduced to replace, right? We start to have Easter, all those kind of things, Christmas. So replace God's appointed celebration of times and seasons. This is the real replacement theory. Are you familiar with replacement theory? Replacement theory actually is advocated especially by the, the reformer, people like Calvin, people like um, Luther. And they say that the church has replaced Israel. But when you look at the whole, and they use Romans, right? But when you look at Romans, Apostle Paul clearly said that the Gentiles are part of the shoot of the, of the Jews. So actually, the real replacement theory is when you take all the things of God and replace it with your own creation. That, unfortunately, is a replacement theology. So people get offended. And when people come to the feast and things, they say, why are you all being so Jewish? Pentecost? Pentecost, I think it's still okay because Pentecost is sort of related to, to Acts, right? But Passover, oh, you are being nutty already. <laughs> Tabernacle, apa tu, apa tu. So it's very interesting, but what I would suggest you can say to people is, look, we are not being Jewish. It is God's way, the Jews simply did it first. It is not Jewish. And that's why I think it's wrong to say it's Jewish. God chose them as a first nation and first tribe, but it is not the Jewish way, it is the God's way. Because you have the Orthodox Jews who totally rejected the ways of God. So we're not being Jewish. We are following the Word of God. That's why everything we do can be traced back to the Bible. All the tradition, all the replacement, all the Easter, whatever, cannot be in the Bible. So anyway, I, I just believe that we all, you all should equip yourself that when there is an opportunity, you can talk with people. You can try to persuade them. Maybe we should have some kind of class to do that. Right? <laughs> How to defend your faith. But anyway. Okay, Apostle John Eckhart, uh, in his book, I think some of you have read it, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Power. Uh, I think a, a, a long while ago we did that book, right? And he said this in the book. It was so evident that ordinary believers are supposed to do extraordinary things, but religion so perverted this truth that the church, unfortunately, created the unbiblical doctrine and practice of clergy and laity. So you know that, right? So clergy are the priests, the leaders, laity are the normal people, the saints. And actually, you know the de definition of laity, right? You are uneducated, fools, stupid. So that's why we, we have this. So people become stupid because they don't take uh, responsibility over their personal growth. So now, the shift to marketplace, of course, in the next few chapters, we'll talk about it is probably, and want to just prepare our mind, is probably one of the most difficult shift. I would say it is even more difficult than from charismatic into the apostolic prophetic. Because you are really saying that, look, we can do things as effectively outside the walls of the church. But that's, that's where we need to understand the dynamic. There is a house structure. God has, has a house structure, and later we'll see the verse. That gives us all the ingredients. One of, the, one of the problem, of course, when we talk about 60s, we have the, the marketplace movement, you have, you have all those um, full... Oops, oops. Okay, wants me to skip all the way. 
Then you can have an early day off, right? Oops. Yikes. The, the, the pointer is having a, a mind of its own. It's okay. Let me try again. Yep. Now this is the thing. When you get pointer that is not. Okay. Now the good news is we're halfway through already, okay? Okay. As you kind of cannot remember where I was. <laughs> so I say it's more challenging and, and what's the thing I want to say already? I have one point, but anyway, it will come back later, okay? <laughs> and that's why we go back to the earlier prophetic word that Chuck have kind of say, right? See, in the, in the real sense, he is dividing to send out. He is causing us to go into our appropriate space. And, and, and some of us, it, it's like, oh, now I remember what I want to say. So in the 60s, we, we started to have the marketplace model coming out. And one of the most famous are, are the full gospel businessmen. And today, now I'm not criticizing them, but what they, are, what they did was they wanted to do marketplace, but they totally eliminated the, the house requirement. And, and later you will see in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, there's one part talking about what are the ingredients of the house. You see, you want to be effective in marketplace, you still need to maintain all the ingredients. Signs and wonders and miracles. You know, some marketplace uh, structure, they, they don't want to have any signs and wonders because they don't want anything overt. They don't want to be like spiritual. But you come, you see, we, we, are, we are spirit, soul and body, right? Together, you can't divide it. It is like when you're dealing with natural things, there are spiritual roots behind many things. But of course, we are saying that use wisdom, don't be weird and things like that. You know, when we talk about covert, we are not saying take out the spiritual. We're just saying that don't make yourself look like some crazy people out there. That's all. But we are still exercising spiritual things, right? You are still doing spiritual warfare, right? You are still speaking in tongues when you can, right? You are still trying to download when you can, right? So that's the thing, that we cannot separate uh, this thing out. And, and when... When the body of Christ went into 18th century, the Enlightenment movement, that's the whole thing. And you get someone like Thomas Jefferson who say, I believe in the entire Bible except the miracles. It's like that kind of duology, that, that kind of separation. And that really came into the, the initial marketplace movement. So people either become very churchy, take the whole service into marketplace, or they become super covert. So, but I believe the balance is in the middle. That we are not weird, we are not strange, but we are still spiritual. So that's the very balance that we are seeking. All right, with that, let's talk about the body, okay? So I already mentioned that a lot of people will be very surprised when, when we say God is not fair. Everyone say God is not fair. God is not fair. And, and He is not. And, but, but then people find it very hard to embrace this because they have a perverted sense of justice. What is the definition of justice? Justice is doing what is right. And what is right is not fair. Uh, and we see many, many examples. Because God is not fair. Why? He does not give everyone the same gifting and assignment, right? Yeah. Right? Thank God for that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to do some of the things that you all want, like to do so much. <laughs> like, like, like all the things that a lot of people want to be, or, or Judah, I, I don't want to do anything like that. that yeah, yeah, me too, a few of us. Because we, we, we like to do our things. <laughs> so, so, let, so, so it's, that's the thing. Because... When you know what you're supposed to do and you do it well, now of course from time to time, you have to play a role. Uh. From time to time, you have to stay in the gap, right? From time to time, you have to do things which you may not necessarily like. That's not your gift, that's your role. You're filling in the gap. So thank God for that. Then we are, no, we are all not assigned to the same geographical boundary, right? So sometimes you hear, okay, let's pray for this nation, and you're like, feel nothing. Anyone ever felt that before? You hear certain nation? Oh, not me, not me. It's okay. Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. It's okay. And we are not all not in the same mountain, right? So, yeah, it's like some of you are very, very passionate. I, I know, you know, I'm very passionate about government mountain, but I know a lot of people really don't like it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And, and, and likewise, we all have some mountain. We, it's not really like or don't like. It's like you are not created to go there. And that's why when you hear the news, when you hear the development, you're just like, okay, whatever, whatever. 
So it's like my daughter every day want to talk to me about the K-pop and things like that. I'm just like, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and she, I can name you 10 or 12 bands. I'm like, whatever. So, so it's like interest and cultivation. Thank God, God is not fair. I mean, I can't imagine we all had to do that, right? Then we come back to Cain and Abel. They are different, different gifting, right? One, uh, one kind of rare animals. The other one cultivate the ground. Different opportunity, different gifting. Yet both were expected to give their very best. And, and God is like, I, I accepted Abel, but I rejected Cain. So that's why when, you, when God demands certain thing, we call it what is the right thing. And that's justice. So there is justice, there is a standard, but God doesn't require the same standard from everyone. If you, are, if you have been given great potential, that means you can jump very, very high, then that is how you will be judged. So, so God is not fair in that sense. So in His wisdom and sovereignty, that's why I, I, I'm glad many of you did uh, hearing the voice of God, because it kind of re-emphasized that, right? It is God who gives the gifting, right? You can't... Now, of course, the scriptures say you can ask for spiritual gift, but at the end of the day, how strong you are, it depends on God, right? Right? What you have, right? And, and some people are just very provided and some people are just not so provided. It's okay. It's okay. Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. It's okay if you're not so provided. Because that means you're good at something else and you have to find it. So he gives a gifting. He set the natural and physical boundary. Thank God for that. So... And, and a few other verses that show God is the one who decides. Ephesians 4, 8, very famous. When Jesus ascended on high, He took many captives and gave gifts to His people, the five ascension gifts, right? So He decided who has what. And I, I mean, if you really believe you have it, we always say, right, how, how do you process it? If you believe you have it, did you hear prophecy about that? Did your leaders affirm it? More impo most importantly, are you producing the fruits? So those are the, the kind of things. Then of course, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. To, to how many? Each one, right? Everyone has different manifestation of Spirit. And some people, you know, by the way, manifestation of Spirit is not even gift. It could be just anointing. So some, a lot, all of us have certain anointing, but some of us are given gift. Now you know the difference between anointing and gift, right? I, I did that uh, last week, I think. Basically, if you have gift, you can do it all the time. You can do it on demand. You have a gift of prophecy. I give you a mic now. <laughs> That's why the other day I was just discussing. Okay, don't want to mention names, okay? But when people, a group of people having provided training, it's like time for activation, time to do certain things. If you have the gift of prophecy, you all should be fighting for the mic, right? And everyone is like, you first, you first, you first, you first. It's like what kind of fake humility is that? So, so when you have the gift, be confident of your gift. Yeah. And, and just do it, especially when you're given permission. Just do it. Just do it. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 6, the, the few verses be, before that. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. Now there are varieties of ministry and the same law. There are varieties of effects. Interesting they use the word effect. But the same God who works all things in all persons. See, at the end of the day, we want to talk about the body concept, right? It's really, at the end, there is only one spirit. Everyone say one spirit. One spirit, one spirit of God that carries out the entire will of heaven, right? There is only one God, same God. Because we are serving the same kingdom. You know, kingdom is basically have two components, right? You have a king and you have a dominion. Dominion is a space. So only one God, only one God. So in the book of 1 Corinthians, Apostle Paul was dealing with a very gifted but divided tribe. So I really kind of, you know, because we always focus on chapter 12, chapter 14, chapter 13, all the famous ones. So I decided to read the whole book. And it's very interesting. After I read the whole thing, yes, he was the apostle to the church of Corinth, but he was also their pastor. You know, that's why, you see, we really need to have the right understanding of the pastoral gift. It is to nurture. It is to cause you to do the right thing. And you know what's one of the first things Pastor Paul, of course he was apostle, but he, he was really the pastor. You know what's one of the first things he did? He said, among you, there are some of you, your sin is worse than the world. You know, like someone is together with the, the, the father's wife. 
obviously not the mother. And, and remember what he say, this person, you should hand it over to Satan. Pastor Paul. So that's why we are dealing with, it is nurturing. And nurturing sometimes requires you to take strong action. So very gifted, but very divided. But then, so simply say that, what, what is our main issue? They did not quite understand the function. They don't understand the purpose. Why are spiritual gifts given? Why we have a body? Okay, so that's why in the two chapter, he, he began to lay down the principle, what we call the function of the body. Now it's very long. We don't have time to go into all the verses. I'm just going to pick a few verses, uh, kind of give us. Now remember that the whole concept of body is important right at the beginning. Because if we don't understand the body, we don't understand we have a space, we don't understand we have a special portion, we will always having this struggle, you know, should I be in marketplace? Should I be in the house? You know, there'll be a lot of tension. There'll be a lot of insecurities because you don't know what you're called. But once you know your purpose, you get, we are not in competition. And you know that some people will be more successful in marketplace, some people will be more successful in the house. It's okay because you know you have played a role. So, so that, that is why. It's critical for us. We understand our portion, our sphere. That's why I mentioned earlier on, this is not like the traditional, you, you know, you're in this WhatsApp group, you're in this committee. No. It's like when you're given a responsibility, if you do it, you will grow. If you don't do it, someone else will take over. And, and recently in my office, I really, because actually my, my, my boss is really like that kind of person. He asks you to lose one thing. If you don't do two weeks later, somebody else has done it. And he don't care whether you're a senior partner or whatever. He don't give face at all. Yeah, seriously. And a lot of senior partners can you know. Can you imagine senior partner and you say, oh, they had the board meeting and the next board meeting, oh, not done. Okay, I appoint someone else to do it. You're out. You're, you're still in the board, but you're out of the job. Can you imagine that? It's like someone is commissioned as a 5 4 but you don't do your job. You're out, even though you have the title. That's worse, right? Actually, I think about it, it's very applicable to our house also. And it's really at the end of the day, whoever wants to do it, that's what Apostle Michel always say. We need people to be slightly, not, not, not very, slightly capable. Slightly. That means you are concerned about the house. You are concerned about what's happening. Because if, you, if you're not concerned, that means, why, why are you here, right? You need to be concerned. And now, of course, we always say concern is not your sphere and things like that. I, I know, you know, you have to balance that out. I'm just saying that when you see a need and nobody is doing that, God can be moving you to that area. And we saw a lot of examples, right? That people, God just moved people. So this is very, very important. And I really hope that at the end of all this processing, we will discover our space. We already mentioned the contrast, the comparison, because they will be, I, I don't know, you know, it depends on our backgrounds, our gifting. Some people will be more drawn to the house. They're like, oh, we like the science and wonders. Oh, we like the Judah. I like to be on stage. Some people are more marketplace. You know, it's like, oh, low key, just do that. Create a lot of money. Open door, you know. So if we are not sure, then it will create a lot of headache. It will create a lot of heartache. Pain, pain. Because you don't, you don't understand. We don't understand our part. So this is the thing that I really hope uh, God will help us to have, a, have, have greater clarity in days ahead. Okay, I want to just look at a few chapters from, from uh, a few verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and then we'll, we'll make a few points and then we'll wrap up already, okay? So, you're all familiar with this. It's just kind of revision. Verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 12. For even as the body is one and yet has many members. One body, many members. Verse 18, we always quote this. But God has placed the members. We are all members, right? So that's why there is... Uh, Bishop Bill Hammond called it what? Membership ministry, right? Each one of them in the body, here's a key word, just as he desire. So God is the one who gave you the gift. He is the one who put you in certain places. If you are not happy, you have to talk to him. Don't talk to us. So the key concept here is the placement of the body which is done in accordance to the desire and arrangement of God. And that's why now, now we have spiritual warfare assignment and you start to, un you start to have the the, the, uh, we start to use the, the term and concept principle. And it's like God is the ultimate principle. And when you think about it, people can accept this in marketplace, but when you come to the house, they find it very hard to accept. Because they always feel like the church should be more lenient. It, it's like we, we, 
See, this is the old pastoral. This is the old wine skin that everything can be excused. But I really believe that in days to come, the house and marketplace will have equal high standard. See, life is all about discovery, right? We want to know what is our passion, what is our potential, what's our gifting, what's our edge. So, so that's why I say, the young people, you, you have one great advantage. You, you are allowed to fail. You have the opportunity to fail. But when you get older and older, you, you start to see that the opportunity becomes more and more narrow. It, it, it is a fact of life. So, so that's why we want to take full advantage of the opportunity given to us to discover. Eventually, we reach a fulfilled life. See, God, we have to look at Him as the designer of our lives. Because the designer, He is a creator. He has your blueprint. He knows you better than you know yourself. So that's why God sees beyond our natural and spiritual understanding and limitation. Sometimes we say we don't, and so often we, we have, we, when we process with people, right, they say, I, I don't really like this. Then we look at the prophetic word, we look at the fruits, we look at other things. Everything is different from what they say. So from time to time, we have to confront people. There is a contradiction there. Huh? Really? Yes, really. So that's why at the end of the day, we go back to God, okay? And the sooner we can embrace this, and this goes back to the whole mindset, God is not fair. You know, when you think about God is not fair and you become unhappy or life is not fair, you get into this kind of problem. Your, your, your understanding becomes fragmented. You become divided. Okay, moving on. Verse 24 to 25. But God has so composed the body given more abundant honour to that member which lack, so that there may be no division in the body and that the members may have the same care for one another. Very interesting that some part have more honour and some part have less honour. God is definitely not fair. How can He give some of you less honourable position? He can and He did. God is not fair. 27. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. So, number two, every member of the body is critical to the overall success of the ecclesia, but He is not fair. Certain parts are less honourable. That's why the entire body needs to support it. There is different degree of honour. Now, when we talk about honour, we are talking about the expression. We are talking about the manifestation. That's why certain spiritual gifts are more hidden. When you go into certain culture and certain uh, seven mountains, you have to be more hidden. That, that is what it means, that you can't be overt in certain places. But you are not less effective. You are not less spiritually honourable. It's just that the way you express, the way you manifest, there is more limitation. And then, of course, even though we are collective, you know, we, we kind of focus on the corporate side and things like that, but verse 27 make it very clear. We are also individual members. There is an individual expression. Now, this is very important because it means that we have personal responsibility. I mean, we, we come here, the tribe helps you, the group helps you, the leaders help you, we, we, our peers help us, but you know, at the end of the day, people have to decide, right? Nobody can decide for you, right? See, this is really the crux of all things. Everything here is to facilitate, but at the end of the day, the year of the door is like this. The door is there. You have to step it in. I remember in the iron season, very, very early on, I, I mean, we are like so not familiar with this kind of thing. And one, one of the first time I heard Chuck Pierce, and he was saying, oh, I saw a door. And I saw people go to the door. But God is saying, you have to choose to enter the door. I'm like, what kind of word is that, you know? And, and it's like, but, but it kind of resonated with me because I, I'm a very, uh, I, I'm a very pro-choice person in, in terms of exercising your will. So, so after a while, I, I understood there is personal responsibility. But of course, iron season was a different season. And, and so many people kind of go into a new move even though they are not sure what's happening. They are being dragged there. Any of you have been dragged to the new move? I hope not. But this pay decade, nobody is being dragged. Nobody is being dragged. This season, you either go in or you're left behind. I, I think the word has become very, very clear. That's why I want to encourage you. I, I think I saw Joyce post the whole prophetic word in the Bible study group. But you... <laughs> Yikes. Today, the slide is... Want us to end quickly. <laughs> oops, 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 oops. Okay, okay, okay. I think this thing is okay. Okay, let's move on. Okay, verse 28. 
Uh, this is the one. Now this verse 28, if, if you forget everything up to this point, just pay attention to this. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administration, and various kind of times. Now, last week, if you're here, I, I, I used this verse and I said, look, even though a lot of time people look at this and say, oh, it's APT, but actually you can see the, the pastor give and evangelist give here also. It's just the term are not used because miracles, healings, helps, administration, tons, is a pastoral and evangelistic anointing. No doubt about that. So this is what we call the entire ingredient for the house. You need to have all these things, otherwise your house is not complete. So this is what we call a prototype set out for complete ingredients in the house. But that's why I put marketplace also because I want to explore this. Whether you can, if you have all these things in marketplace, then isn't that a house in marketplace? But anyway, this is just a preview for the next few chapters, okay? So you get the complete 5-4, five, 5 ascension, however you want, you want to do it, of course with the APT there. But then you look at what are the necessary anointing that you have nurturing, the pastoral ministry, right? You have recruitment. Evangelism is all about recruitment, right? But then above all these things, there is what we call kingdom promotion. Do you know that everyone is involved in kingdom promotion? If you're in a company, and if everyone says, oh, you're in this company, then you're like, oh yeah, it's very bad, I don't want to be here. Uh, then you are not for kingdom promotion, you're in the wrong place. You are dishonoring your structure. But we all should be, I know some, some of us are not so gifted in marketing, right? But nevertheless, we are all supposed to do kingdom promotion. So every time, what is the easiest way to do kingdom promotion? Oh, what church do you go to? Oh, there's opportunity already, right? And most of the time, if you give the name, they'll be like, huh? What? Then, depending on the opportunity, you may want to share a little bit about what we do. So usually, I'll start off with, oh, we are more marketplace. Oh, what do you mean by marketplace? Oh, none of us are full-time ministers. Really? Y usually, that will cause some kind of conversation. Then it's up to you. You find your own way to promote. So that's why at the end of the day, apostolic center needs to have all the ingredients, all the anointing dimension that is stated in verse 28. That's why I really believe that if we bring this into marketplace, it becomes also a house. But it becomes a marketplace house. That's why we really have that kind of hybrid. But we'll, we'll explore that in the chapters I have. All right, one or two more slides and we're done, okay? Okay, verse 29 to 31. Are all no apostles, are they? Are all no prophets, are they? Are all, are all not teachers, are they? You know, this one, right? And then, okay, you read yourself, but then the last line, but earnestly desire the greater gifts. Now, if you have just done hearing the voice of God, you have seen this verse before, right? So that's why we... Go to the last point here. Spiritual gifts is based solely on the grace of God. He wants you to have it, you have it. He wants your level to be high, you have, you'll be high. I, I'm talking about the starting point. But you can cultivate it and God can multiply and increase your gift. But if you don't do anything, it will stay the same. And you know, right, even those people, when they receive spiritual gifts, if they don't do anything with it, their, their spiritual gift is still high level. Have you seen prophetic people like that? They never activate they never do anything. They never read the Word of God. They can still prophesy very accurately because, because gifts, when, when given, are not revocable, cannot be written. Yeah. See, we simply cannot demand to be given a particular set of gifts. But the good news is, what's the good news? The good news is God said we can desire greater gifts. You know this verse very well, right? 1 Corinthians 14.1. After the whole chapter on love, he started out with this. And I find it very interesting, after the whole chapter on love, he said, pursue love. Yet, he already said love is more important, but whenever you see the word yet, it means that this other part is also important. You go after 1 Corinthians 13, yes, but then I also want you to earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. This is the only spiritual gifts you can ask. So you can ask, but you cannot demand. You know there's a difference between ask and demand? Ask is, when you ask, it's like what Hannah did at, at um, you know, with, with Eli. You, you ask and then you say, look, I, I'm going to leave it to your discretion. Demand is like, is like you, you don't want to let go of anything. Now, there are time for demand. There are time for demand. But when it comes to spiritual gifts, you ask and then you see what God will do. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, now you are Christ's body, okay, the last part of the end, individual members of it. We, we, we mentioned this already earlier on, right? 
See, although collective is important, we are also individual members. That means we are members. You, you have a job, you have a responsibility. So it means personal responsibility. It means within our spiritual journey, when we try to complete our destiny, we actually have a job to do. Now, a few weeks ago, I, I teach on First Hebrews 10, 19 to 25, right? We talk about, uh, you know, people always use this verse, right? Do not stop meeting together, right? Have, have, have people ever quote to you, oh, don't stop meeting together. You haven't been to church for a long time. How can I never see you? In, in the old, old system, we always get people like that, right? Call you, oh, David, I haven't seen you for a while. What are you doing now? Asia, very busy, is it? Okay, so, but, <laughs> but then it's like, but you know, before we go into that verse, verse 22 say, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. So what it means is that everything starts with your personal relationship with God. If we don't take ownership of that, nothing else matters. If you don't want God, nobody can force you to have it. That's why at the end of the day, this becomes very, very important. And I feel like even at a young age, we have to help the, the, the young people, the children to understand this, that if you don't want God, nobody can help you, seriously. And of course, we have a job to encourage, to cultivate and things like that. Let's just look at some of the things for personal accountability. I mean, it's your job to draw near, right? Can, can someone else help you to draw near? Here's the Bible. Read, read, read. Bible bashing. And in fact, you, you have seen many, many people, right? many famous people, right? And uh, you know some of the famous people over there? Uh, I know George Lucas, Phil Jackson, you know, the Chicago Bulls coach. You know, they, their parents are missionary. Their parents are pastors. And because of the Bible bashing, they hated the faith. Self-starting. Can, can someone help you self-start? Come on, self-start, self-start. You know, as if you have a spring at the back. Turn, 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 and you, you start to move. You know those kind of toys? No, you can't. This requires personal accountability. Feed yourself. Can people feed you? Okay, force feeding. And yeah, I, I mean, when you sit here, when you do training and things like that, sometimes, hopefully, you can absorb a little bit. But if people really don't want to feed themselves, no matter how many training they, they come, they won't get nothing. Right? What else? Perceive open door. It, it's like there's an open door. You know, some people cannot see, you know. You say, there's an open door. Huh? Really? Because the, the prophetic dimension is not activated. Cannot see the spiritual. Then, of course, this one. Step into open door. When there's open door, you need people to, to make a decision, right? Sometimes you see people cannot make decision, right? But here's the thing. Just now, we, we heard Eunice's testimony, right? So many open door. Then, then that's why you need to perceive. You need to go back and say, okay, which one? Which one? There's 20 doors. If you are the type that likes buffet and likes choices, then God will give you many doors. Some people are very happy with Indomie every day, so it's like, whatever. <laughs> different people, different gifting, different personality. So, you know, some of us are just a bit more extra. It's okay. Break all, re <laughs> break all relationship. See, this is very, very important when we go into the future. Certain relationships have to die. And nobody can do that for you. And, yeah, I mean, certain... I mean, of course, there are many ways to do it. Sometimes you just don't have contact anymore and it's just like, oh, certain times you have to say, look, I don't think we should work together anymore. This could be personal relationship. This could be um, business relationship. Even in family, right? Sometimes there are family members that unfortunately you just have to stay away with. Unfortunately. Sowing and planting, you decide what you, what you, what you invest, right? You, you decide how you give, right? And this is, that's why every time we know we, we do you know, we're just discussing, right? Like, you know, tithing, first fruit, and then, you know, we have Malkizidat, right? Then people are like, oh, Malkizidat, is it high? And you see, at the end of the day, we, we have teaching on giving, but it goes back to your personal accountability. How is revelation causing you to give? You have a choice to give what you want. Self-deliverance. And, and you know, of course, a time to succeed is very important. It facilitates... But do you know that at the end of the day, it is you, your confession, that allows the legal right to be taken away? Yeah. And have you seen people who attended many rounds and don't get quite delivered? You have, right? I mean, of course, we, we always say, oh, they, they come many times, they sound improvement. There is always some improvement. But at the end of the day, it really depends whether a person wants to move on or not. Whether the truth really impacted their, their conviction. I mean, we all have different issues we need to overcome. 
Nobody is perfect, right? So that's why through the process, from time to time, there will be certain conviction, I shouldn't do this anymore. And then you will be delivered. So that's why at the end of the day, all this nurturing, teaching, uh, mentoring, etc., whatever you want to call it, it is to cause us to come to a place where we are able to self-deliver. This is personal accountability. Nobody can do it for you. Operating within sphere, you, you have to choose, right? Now, of course, I, I mentioned we, we want people to, to want to look at uh, what, what's happening in, in your tribe and things like that. So I said a little bit gebo is good. But you don't want to be so like the old pastoral, everything you, you want to go into the gossip and things like that. So these are the things I, I believe uh, that God is causing us to have personal responsibility. Okay, right, last slide already. So, so you see, that's why I, I started off with this, with, with the body, because many years ago when we were commissioned, Apostle Michelle and myself, the, the prophetic word given to us is that God wants a, a priesthood that this nation has not seen before. That means it's a new way of believers operating, right? So that's why we are in a very pioneering phase. I mean, we have been doing this for a while already, but it is still very pioneering. It's still very new. Uh, you know, doing market placing, equipping, sending, you know, cause people to be change agent in market. It's still very new. In fact, you can't find, you probably can't find another church like this, I would say. It's very, very strange. And people will be like, you know, are you really? Because we are really a house that trains people to go into marketplace. Yes, you have marketplace, full gospel businessmen. Those are different. Those are really marketplace ministry per se. So that's why we had to understand how the body works. It, it is foundational. Everyone say foundational. So foundation means you have to really understand it. Otherwise, the next few chapters will be very difficult. We must know our own portion and sphere and be very secure. And, and that's why we have to stop saying it's not fair. Because every time you say it's not fair, you, it, it shows that you don't know your portion. It shows that you don't know your gift. It shows that you don't know your inheritance. And that's very serious. Because that was what Cain did, right? And, and do you realize that when Cain complained, what did God do? God didn't manja him, right? Did God manja Cain? He said, if you do what is right, you'll be alright. Otherwise, sin is waiting, crouching at the door, and you might. It might be the end of you. I mean, what kind of pastoral message is that? It's not. So, so that's why God doesn't manja us because He wants us to be very secure, to come to a place where, you know, we, we will stop saying it's not fair. And then it will happen when we stop blaming others. That's why when you have this mindset, it's not fair, you start to blame everyone. And, and I, I said already early on, that this is really the foundation of the work movement that is happening. Work movement basically is like this. They, they need to blame someone. They need to blame someone other than taking personal accountability. And this is really, unfortunately, a, a virus that is very strong in the body of Christ, okay? So that's why when we start to say, you know, just on all the slides, the nine things, if we say we will take personal accountability, I think things will begin to shift. So Lord, I just pray right now, you cause us to have an understanding how the body works. And Lord, I pray and declare that each one of us, we will find our portion. We will find our sphere. We will be very secure about it. And, and even right now, I feel like the Lord is saying that I'm going to give confirmation. I'm going to give signs and wonders that will confirm that you are in the right lane. And for I say, many of you have been trying to find the right lane, but this is a season the right lane will be made over you and you will be in the highway that caused you not to be divided in this season of dividing. So we declare that we will all find our portion and we will run with it. So that's all for now, and we declare all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.